Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to complete the Natural Solubilizers video series for now with Natural Solubilizers Part 3. Now I have two other videos. Going back a few years, we really didn't have much choice when it came to using natural solubilizers. There was really only one or two choices out there. Now, as you can see from the three solubilizer videos, we've got lots of choice. So just remember at the end of the video, I do show you a summary table because some solubilizers will work better with some essential oils. And of course, some solubilizers have some incompatibilities you might need to be aware of when making your selection. And of course, it then comes down to availability as well. So let me show you some of the latest natural solubilizers. And of course you can watch the other videos to get a complete list of all the natural solubilizers and see exactly how well they perform under different conditions. So again, I have my polysorbate mixtures here. I'm using orange essential oil, peppermint essential oil, and geranium essential oil. Now I've used a five is to one ratio here. Um, so I've used 5% of the polysorbate 20 and 1% of the essential oil and some vitamin E mix. And I've used the polysorbate, it's not natural, but I've used it as a benchmark so we can see just how beautifully clear these solubilizers perform when used in that five is to one ratio using the synthetic material. Now here we have the first material that I studied. And what I wanted to do in this video was show you just how the different solubilizer or oil inputs can impact whether they perform really well or not as well as we'd like. So the material I'm looking at here is polysugarmulse D9. And when I mix this using the same five is to one ratio, so 5% of the solubilizer to 0.8% of the essential oils and then 0.2 of a tocopherol, so a 1% oil loading total, you can see there was still some residue. It didn't solubilize it effectively in any of the oils that I tested. But just to demonstrate that we don't wanna throw out a perfectly good possibility, we just might need to play with the percentage a little because here we have polysugarmulse D9 again, using 5% of the polysugarmulse D9 to 0.4% of the essential oil plus 0.1% tocopherol. And while it's a little cloudy, it is perfectly stable. You can see there's no residue, there's no settling out. And I wanted to demonstrate this because in previous videos, uh, I've, I've most often used a uh, five is to one ratio and some of the natural solubilizers simply don't compare to the polysorbate 20. Some have, but we don't wanna disclude other perfectly suitable solubilizers simply because we just need to play with the percentages a little. So at a 10 is to one ratio, the polysugarmulse D9 was very effective to solubilize those three essential oils. Now, why am I testing three different essential oils? Different essential oils will give you different results. So you do need to check with the solubilizing material you're using and the exact essential oils or blend that you want to use. But what I wanted to demonstrate first was different percentage a very different and very stable result. Now it's not a perfectly clear solution, uh, but very, very stable. So this has solubilized very effectively, although they're not completely clear. The other material that I looked at was Velsan Flex. Now again, I started with a five is to one ratio and you can see there is some residue at the bottom. It did not solubilize totally. But when I altered that ratio to a 10 is to one, I got beautiful, clear solutions. So again, if you want really clear end results, the Velsan Flex performed exceptionally well at a 10 is to one ratio. Now there's another bonus to using this material. It's a preservative booster, which means when I use this in my formula, I can cut down my preservative input or I can be more confident about a really long shelf life from a natural preservative selection. Of course, when it comes to using preservative boosters 
or any type of preservative in any type of formula for that matter, you should of course be checking them with preservative efficacy testing. But you can use preservative boosters very effectively to help boost the preservative performance of your formula. And in this case, if I'm using it as a solubilizing agent, I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm getting a beautiful clear solution from my solubilizer and preservative boosting at the same time. Now I have put this information into a summary table for you. Make sure you contact us for a copy of this and then you can also get access to our other natural solubilizer summary tables too. And remember then you can compare and have a look at which ones might best suit your application. Nothing wrong with the Polysugar Molds D9. If you're packaging it into opaque packaging, a consumer won't see that it's not totally transparent and it is totally stable. Or if clarity is what you're looking for with preservative boosting, the Vilsan Flex could be a good option for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you watch those other natural solubilizer videos if you haven't done so already to get a complete picture of the natural solubilizers out there. Make sure you leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.